I must have said it a thousand times on my channel. Spoken French is very, very different from written French. That could be why you struggle to understand and speak French, even though you've studied it for years or maybe decades. If you want to improve your French fluency, you need to know and practice these differences. And of course, French grammar is no exception. In today's video, we will revisit some of my most popular videos so that you can get a few shortcuts about spoken French grammar. Are you ready? C'est parti! One of the biggest unwritten rules of modern everyday spoken French is that we almost never use nous when we're talking about a group of people that we're in. We use on instead. Maybe you already know this easy trick to sound more authentically French, but what happens when we start layering grammar rules? For example, when we're using le passé composé, we sometimes have to make le participe passé agree with the subject. But how does that work with on? It is a singular pronoun, but should we use it with a singular or a plural terminaison if we're talking about several people? And what about gender? Does it matter as well? Today, we're going to explore all that and more so you can fully master le passé composé in French. Le passé composé is the most common tense in French when we're talking about the past. And it is also very common in pop culture as well. It seems simple enough, but there are several exceptions and extra rules. How does le passé composé actually work in French? Here is a riddle. How do you say we went to the Eiffel Tower in informal French? Would you write on est allé voir la tour Eiffel or on est allé with an S voir la tour Eiffel? That's a problem that the students raised up in one of my programs and I think it is a fascinating question. That's because on is ambiguous. In French, on means someone, often someone we don't know or a general people. As in, aux états unis on apprend parfois le français à l'école. In the US, people sometimes learn French at school. Aux états unis on apprend parfois le français à l'école. But in informal French, it is the way that we say nous for we, nous. We rarely use the conjugation of nous in everyday spoken French. For we like cheese, for instance, we're going to say on aime le fromage, on aime le fromage. Or for we saw the Eiffel Tower, on a vu la tour Eiffel, on a vu la tour Eiffel with the on. As you can see here, on uses the conjugation of il or elle, the third person singular. So that's the answer, right? Just use on as il and all is simple. Yes, but for the purpose of agreement in grammar, well, on is just like nous for the informal meaning. So we say on est belle, on est belle, we are pretty in the feminine. And we say on est beau, we are handsome in the masculine. You can also see that in the passé composé. On est allé voir la tour Eiffel with the S at the end because it is a group of several people. Or if you're a group of women specifically, on est allé with E-E-S voir la tour Eiffel. On est allé voir la tour Eiffel. But when we're using on in the traditional sense of some people or someone we don't know, it does stay in the masculine singular. For example, au Mexique, on est allé très loin dans les décorations de Noël. In Mexico, people went very far into Christmas decorations. Au Mexique, on est allé très loin dans les décorations de Noël. Here, on is some people, people we don't know, so it is singular masculine. I know this is subtle and you will find many mistakes everywhere, including in newspapers. For now, what you can remember is that on is plural when you're thinking about agreement. And if you're trying to use on to mean some people in le passé composé with être and in writing, just try to find another way to say it. Okay, your turn now. How would you write in French we left on time with on as a group of three women. How would you say that? Remember, partir is actually parti. That's the past participle. 
how would you say it? Yes, it is. On est parti à l'heure. Because we have a group of three women, party at the end is E, S, E because it's feminine and S because it's plural. On est parti à l'heure. Good. It doesn't matter whether you've been learning French for a few months, a few years, or maybe a few decades. It is so important to refresh your knowledge from time to time. It is completely normal for us to forget things, especially if we've been learning them in high school 30 or 40 years ago. It can also be fun to see how much we actually remember. For today's lesson, I thought it would be fun to go over some everyday informal French grammar rules. Remember, the grammar rules that we use in everyday spoken French is often different from the one that you learned in high school. So who knows, maybe you will even learn something brand new. Are you ready to find out? C'est parti! Our first rule for informal grammar today is pronunciation, and it is with couper les voyelles de je et tu. Cutting the vowels of je, I in French, and tu, the singular you in English. I have to mention it first because it is so frequent that I will be using it in almost all the examples throughout today's lesson. Oh, and by the way, you will find all these examples in writing and many more, as well as the rules, at the blog post for this lesson over on my website in a free document that you can read online and even download. It is on the link below this video. So, what is this rule exactly? Well, you probably know that je becomes je before a vowel. It loses its a. Uh, That's a rule even in formal correct French. We don't say je ai faim, we say j'ai faim, I am hungry. Well, in informal, everyday spoken French, we extend this rule to les consonnes, the consonants as well. So, instead of saying je pars de chez moi, I am leaving home right now, je pars de chez moi, we would often pronounce je pars de chez moi. Je pars de chez moi. Same thing with je te rappelle demain. We would say je te rappelle demain. I am calling you back tomorrow. Je te rappelle demain. We cut the E in je. Hein? Et je te rappelle demain, ok? Je t'embrasse. One special case is for verbs that start with an S. More notably, savoir. Savoir, we say je sais for I know. Or être. Je suis, I am. In informal French, as we said, we cut the E uh, in je. But je sais and je suis are a bit awkward to pronounce. Je sais, je suis, that's difficult. So French people very often instead say je and je suis. Che and shui. So a phrase like je suis là, I am here is actually pronounced shui là, shui là. Là. Là, les gars. A similar thing happens with tu, which is you for friends and family. In everyday spoken French, we often cut the u when it comes before a vowel. So instead of saying, for example, tu aimes les fleurs, you like flowers, tu aimes les fleurs, we actually pronounce it t'aimes les fleurs. T'aimes les fleurs, we cut the u into t'aimes les fleurs. Or instead of saying tu oublies tout le temps tes clés, tu oublies tout le temps tes clés, you always forgetting your keys. We would say tu oublies tout le temps tes clés, tu oublies tout le temps tes clés. You will find more examples with different verbs in the blog post for today's lesson. But now that's enough groundwork to get to the next rule, questions. In informal French, on ne fait pas l'inversion du sujet et du verbe dans les questions. We do not use the inversion of subject and verb in a question. You probably learned everything about the inversion at school, and for now, this is good news. It means that you don't have to learn or relearn all the complicated ways to build a question in French. For instance, let's take a simple sentence. 
Tu es sûr. You are sure. Tu es sûr. As the question, it makes are you sure in English. In formal, proper French that you learned at school, we would say es-tu sûr to ask a question. Es-tu sûr? This is again the formal, proper way to ask a question. But the inversion really sounds way too stiff and formal in everyday spoken French. There's another way that you probably learned at school as well, which is est-ce que tu es sûr? Est-ce que tu es sûr? This is less formal, but it is still quite complex and looks scary to learn. However, in informal, everyday spoken French, real spoken French, we would use something much simpler. Not es-tu sûr or est-ce que tu es sûr, but tu es sûr, are you sure? Tu es sûr? No inversion, no added structure, it's just the affirmation tu es sûr, but with a question mark at the end. We call this un point d'interrogation. Un point d'interrogation, a question mark. And since you remember the first rule that we mentioned today of removing the U in tu, we actually say instead of tu es sûr, t'es sûr, t'es sûr, t'es sûr. You might notice that this example applies to yes, no questions. Those that start with a verb, like t'es là, are you here? T'es là, or t'as oublié tes clés? Did you forget your keys? T'as oublié tes clés? But we also avoid the inversion with questions with interrogative pronouns, such as où for where, où, or qui for who, etc. We just put this pronoun at the end of the question. For example, the question where are you should be où es-tu, où es-tu in formal proper French. But it is actually pronounced t'es ou in everyday spoken French. T'es ou, t'es ou. Allô Julie? Oui mais t'es où? And of course, as in every French rule, there is one main exception. I have to talk about it because we will need it for the next examples of the lesson. This exception is que, the interrogative pronoun for what that becomes quoi as an object. Don't worry, I made a whole lesson on the different uses of quoi in French, but for these rules, it is not as complex as it seems. It only means that instead of asking the proper question, que fais-tu, what are you doing, que fais-tu, we would ask in everyday French, tu fais quoi, tu fais quoi, more literally, you're doing what, you're doing what, tu fais quoi. It's this way because of complicated grammar rules, but also because que sounds ugly at the end of the sentence. So que fais-tu becomes tu fais quoi in everyday spoken French. But don't get too bogged down on the rules anyway. Just keep in mind how a few sentences are structured in everyday spoken French and you will get the rest. Actually, repeat after me. C'est quoi? C'est quoi? What is it? C'est quoi? C'est quoi ça? C'est où? Where is it? C'est où? C'est où? And we don't do la liaison, okay? Between E and U. Tu fais quoi? What are you doing? Tu fais quoi? Tu fais quoi? Again, tu fais quoi? And at last, t'es où? Where are you? T'es où? T'es où? With these four questions, you will remember how the rule works. Our third rule for today is very simple. Enlevez le ne des négations. Drop the ne in negative sentences. In formal, proper French, the correct grammar is to make negative sentences with ne and pas, as in Tu ne sais pas où sont tes clés. You don't know where your keys are. Tu ne sais pas où sont tes clés. Or, elle n'oublie pas ses clés. She doesn't forget her keys. Elle n'oublie pas 
c'est clé. But in everyday spoken French, we don't think the ne is necessary since the pas already shows the negation. So the ne almost always gets dropped so that we can speak French faster. So that instead of hearing tu ne sais pas où sont tes clés, you would hear tu sais pas où sont tes clés. We remove the ne, tu sais pas où sont tes clés. Or instead, elle n'oublie pas ses clés would be elle oublie pas ses clés. Elle oublie pas ses clés. She doesn't forget her keys. Okay, but these are just rules. What is more interesting is playing with them and seeing how they fit together. So now let's keep in mind the three rules for today. Je and tu often lose their vowels. Don't use the inversion in questions and drop the ne in negations. Let's try to apply those rules to formal French sentences with correct grammar that you will find in books or newspapers. For instance, how would you say in everyday informal French Je ne sais pas. I don't know. Je ne sais pas. Take a few seconds to think about it. Je ne sais pas. Okay, well, first we drop the ne, so it becomes je sais pas, je sais pas. Je sais pas. But often, remember, when speaking, je and c'est merge together, so what you would actually hear is je sais pas, je sais pas, or even je sais pas, je sais pas. And I didn't use this example at random because Shepa is something that you will hear a lot in French conversations. Let's review two more examples so that you can really get used to the rules. For example, Auras-tu le temps de dîner avant le spectacle? Will you have time to have dinner before the show? Auras-tu le temps de dîner avant le spectacle? And n'ont-ils pas pris leurs clés? Didn't they take their keys? N'ont-ils pas pris leurs clés? Take a few seconds to think about it and even pause the video right now to think if you want to take some time to write it down using a proper pen and paper. Okay, did you think about it? Great. Our first example was Auras-tu le temps de dîner avant le spectacle? It is a question with an inversion of subject or verb with Auras-tu, Auras-tu, inversion, and it sounds very formal. So let's make it simpler by removing that inversion first. Tu auras le temps de dîner avant le spectacle? Tu auras le temps de dîner avant le spectacle? This is already much closer to everyday spoken French. You could really hear a sentence like that in a normal everyday spoken French conversation. Many people would go one step further though and cut the U in tu when it comes before the vowel A. This way it becomes T'auras le temps de dîner avant le spectacle? T'auras le temps de dîner avant le spectacle? Will you have the time to have dinner before the show? Repeat after me. T'auras le temps de dîner avant le spectacle? Good. Our last example was N'ont-ils pas pris leurs clés? N'ont-ils pas pris leurs clés? Didn't they take their keys? N'ont-ils pas pris leurs clés? It is a negation and a question and an inversion. So it sounds really formal and sophisticated. You would never hear someone say that in a real French conversation. It sounds like a theatre play or an old book. No, instead we would once again remove the inversion to get ils n'ont pas pris leur clé and then drop the ne. Ils ont pas pris leur clé. They didn't take their keys. Ils ont pas pris leur clé. Now, the silent S in il comes before a vowel. So we make la liaison. Ils ont pas pris leur clé. La liaison is another massive can of worms and you'll find a link to the lesson I made about it in the blog post for today's lesson. For now, just notice how the S at the end of il sounds like the sound at the end of it. Ils ont, ils ont, repeat after me. Ils ont, ils ont pas pris leur clé. 
Ils n'ont pas pris leurs clés. They didn't take their keys. Ils n'ont pas pris leurs clés. Good. But if you have to take just one thing from today's lesson, it is that French grammar rules are pretty different between correct written French that you probably learned in textbooks and informal, often spoken French. You should not use today's rules in a written French exam, an official document or a business meeting. However, you need to know these rules in order to understand French conversations. And the best thing is, as you saw, it can help you bypass the most complicated grammar rules in French because you don't actually need them to speak French. So remember a few of these examples and you will find that speaking and understanding French is much easier than you think.